Mixing with Mike Ultimate Plugin Guide. The manufacturer spotlight is Sound Toys. Sound Toys uh, was created in the early 2000s, led by Ken Bogdanovich, who is the CEO and lead designer. Um, Ken's history goes back to Eventide and development of algorithms for uh, the famous H3000 processor, which was a revolutionary processor uh, originally uh, released in the 80s. And he later led a team of people to start a company called Wave Mechanics, which created TDM plugins, uh, Sound Blender, Pitch Doctor, Pure Pitch, Speed, or just a few of those plugins. And that company later folded into what is now called Sound Toys, which is primarily all uh, native processing. So uh, Sound Toys, as a company, is really an amazing collection of creative effects tools. And that's really what makes it a unique company. Um, it's kind of rooted in vintage and analog technology, uh, everything. It's got emulations of everything from foot pedals to vintage tape delays, uh, filters, uh, analog filters, pitch shifters, phasers, tape delays, panning devices, and all kinds of other unique processors that he dug out of his closet. And although some of the plugins themselves are direct emulations, most are actual compilations of similar effects that are kind of bundled together uh, so that they fit into a single plugin format. And the idea was rather than just providing a direct emulation of you know most of these plugins, can focused on capturing the essential nature of each processor so that it could be formatted into a modern workflow. And this would allow you to expand upon the original features while preserving the unique nature and sound of some of these amazing plugins. A lot of these are not emulated because they weren't necessarily as popular as some of the classic things that, that you see emulated. And most of those things end up being, you know, vintage EQs or, or some of the, you know, all time, you know, uh, classic, you know, EMT plates and, and uh, spring reverbs and lexicon, you know, 224 and 480L and EMT 1250. Uh, uh, um, so going beyond that, um, what Sound Toys has done is gotten into some of the grittier, more interesting, character-filled effects. And that's really a big part of what makes Sound Toys so amazing. And the result of that, um, you know, create an amazing palette of effects and tonal shaping tools that can pretty much breathe life and character into the most generic of uh, tracks that you may have to be working on. So let's do a quick uh, overview of some of the uh, um, line, the product line here. Um, and then we can kind of, you know, just kind of quickly just do a quick overview just to kind of give you an idea of what's in there. I, these are just sort of layered out alphabetically, but, you know, just to kind of give you an idea, I opened up the effect rack, which is really cool because in addition to having all these unique effects, you can also kind of, uh, Put them into effects chains and then uh, this gives you additional features of controlling input output levels and recycling of the sound uh, wet dry controls etc so this adds a lot uh, to your workflow capability so what i have here is all of the stuff that have, exists in the effects rack and then some of the sort of extra tools that uh, reside outside of it and um and so let's get started so we'll start with the crystallizer the crystallizer is primarily about pitch shifting and reverse echo. And what it really is centered around is an algorithm um, and a program called Crystal Echoes. And uh, it's part of this reverse shifting algorithm that was created um, for the H3000 that has a unique sonic character which um, was captured in this plugin. And that's the essential nature of this. So uh, it's kind of interesting to make a plugin that's just about a particular program <laughs> in a given device, as opposed to all the things that it can do. But this one is truly unique and really can uh, is an expansive uh, creative tool that can turn uh, something into anything into something completely different. And that's kind of the idea of it. The decapitator is all about saturation. Um, primarily, you start with the different styles. Uh, you have an Ampex uh, 350 um, uh, saturation emulations. Uh, there's a Chandler um, EMT uh, TG. Uh, that's from the TG12345 channel that goes back to Abbey Road, but this is an emulation of the uh, emulation of that, which comes from Chandler. And uh, then there's Neve uh, 1057, so that's going back into the 60s prior to the 1073. Uh, and then if you're familiar with the thermionic culture, uh, the culture vulture, there are two uh, primary 
things in there. So this is not really vintage, but um, the saturation boutique processing, and there are two modes, triode and pentode. And this is a, this is a really amazing tool with the tone shaping uh, and the way that it's laid out in terms of really giving you, uh, you know, pure analog saturation that really maintains the character of analog. So that's an excellent one. Uh, the Devil Lock is kind of an interesting one. It's an odd one. It's really a, a brick wall limiter uh, from the 1960s created by Shure. Uh, the device was actually called the Level Lock. And uh, essentially what it had was a switch on it. It had different distances. And it would uh, allow someone at a podium, for example, who was giving a speech, it would keep uh, the volume of what they were saying at an equal level uh, while they were uh, speaking through the PA so words wouldn't get lost. And it's a very aggressive processor. And when you apply audio through it, that takes it to a whole other level. Um, I'll go on here. Uh, Echo Boy is uh, Echo Boy and Decapitator are probably the two signature plugins in my mind, um, the must-have plugins, if you will, from uh, their collection. The Echo Boy is uh, basically an amalgamation of all different kinds of processors, and I think you have up to like 30 different styles of processor that you can go in, and it gives you all different kinds of effects that go back from everything from tape emulation or you know tape delays, just standard tape delays, Echoplex, Space Echo, Memory Man, the Boss DM2, the Telray oil can delay, which is a really unique idea. And even you can get um, a, like a CE1 um, pedal uh, chorus effect, which is really an amazing um, uh, effect. So you have 30 different styles and an amazing number of controls. Uh, and this is also paired with the Echo Boy Jr. Uh, so the Echo Boy Jr. kind of strips the features down to kind of simplify it. So you get the, uh, the tape um, slapback, uh, echoplex, space echo, um, basically, um, you know, uh, tape that's worn out, um, memory man, um, and, you know, so you get some uh, different things, high cut, low cut, a saturation filter, which pretty much uh, all of the things have on them is some kind of saturation uh, capability, so that's, that's obviously a bonus there. So that's a really, that's a really amazing one in whatever way that you get it. Um, the next one is the, uh, oh, this is the Echo Boy Jr. So this does show up in the rack here, so I didn't need to put it on the side. Uh, Filter Freak. Uh, Filter Freak is basically uh, analog style filters. So when you think about that, you think of like the Moog, Mutron, Sherman Filter Bank, you know, wah pedals and those types of things. And those are the characteristics that you get from this. So it's a very powerful tool for uh, managing that type of stuff. Um, if we go down uh, the line here, we got the micro shift. Um, the micro shift is sort of a combination of a style of effect, which is like a stereo widening effect. Um, and uh, there were many devices that you, there were a few devices that you could do it with really, really well. One was the AMS DMX uh, 1580, which was a sample, uh, it's actually a sampling, stereo sampling digital delay, really super high end uh, delay. And you could do this effect with it where you could shift the pitch and have a standard, you know, have a delay on it, but you could also modulate the delay if you wanted to, and created this really uh, cool widening effect that also smoothed out uh, pitch inaccuracies in the in the original performance. And the H3000 also does a similar thing. So with the micro shift, uh, you get three basic flavors and a little detuning and delay. And uh, there's also a, a mini version of this called the little micro pitch shift, which just give you the three basic characters there. So if you just want like a quick delay and you don't want to go through, all, uh, you know, go through extra options, then that's like a quick one to just kind of throw on a track. Then when we go on from uh, there, uh, another powerful one here, I'll just put this up at the top slot, is Pan Man. Um, in the analog era, uh, the only automated panning was you turning a pan pot back and forth. <laughs> and maybe Eddie Kramer is most famous for that. Uh, and I think it's a signature of his where he has to pan something, usually a guitar solo and everything that he works on. Um, but this is an emulation uh, or a series of emulations that, that embody the characteristics of the pan scan, cyclosonic panner, and spanner. And these were three analog uh, pieces of gear that would do panning. The cyclosonic panner actually does quasi or you know quad panning it actually is sort of like a four channel output and so you could do like circular panning which is a very interesting effect and so it's amazing how creative many of these tools you know um uh, came to be you know how they came out um and you know and also with the pan 
man with a pan scan there was also a really interesting thing uh, that had um, a triggering timing you could feed in another signal and have it trigger um, on different cadences the panning would only move when the trigger signal was coming in or it would wait for a certain number of trigger hits before it would start panning and that created some you know really really uh, gave you the ability to create some really unique effects um, the phase mistress is everything um, phaser you know so all different kinds of phase effects including a biphase a boss super phase phase 90 moog fuger small stone um, there were many a lot of these things came really well from effects pedals and uh, and I think original um, um, phasing is just a very short delay like less than a millisecond delay that's modulated and that creates a sharp uh, sweeping kind of filter effect that's really uh, that's really cool and and you hear it a lot in records from the 60s and stuff like that um, let's kind of move on here primal tap primal tap is a very cool plugin that is of uh, the lexicon prime time delay and this was a really unique delay um, because memory and digital delays were very expensive and so the way that they kind of did it with the multiply button is you would sacrifice quality audio quality for getting longer delays that was the way that they kind of worked around it and had some really unique features and uh, it's hard to like you know just kind of simply describe these things but when you if you're familiar with the original delay a lot of the settings or some of the settings like the phase switches on the different um, outputs and stuff like that exist in the tweak panel and and most of these plugins will have additional layers um, um, that allow you to tweak parameters in um, you know um, with more depth like even on the phase mitris you got you know uh, you know LFO and tweaking and just you know there's all kinds of other things as style editor that was what I was looking for right here you know which gives you all different kinds of um, uh, you know classic phaser styles you think it's just like a simple thing but it's actually quite complicated when you really start digging into it and uh, and there's also a little primal tap which is a mini version of that to kind of give you that same effect one other cool effect on that is the freeze control which will allow you to grab a certain segment of audio and then if you start um, zipping around with the rate and the depth and all of that sort of stuff you can create some really wild effects and turn something into something completely different which is very cool um, the radiator and the little radiator uh, are Altec components uh, this is the Altec uh, 1567A tube mixer um, this is probably most famously known going back to Motown in the early 60s and many of the records that were run through that and then there is a preamp which is the little radiator which is the 1566A preamp and uh, so this is more of a pure emulation uh, one of the ones that's more of a pure emulation of that and of course with the ability to drive components and mic line switches and all of that sort of stuff um, another pure emulation in here is the Siemens EQ the CQ and the CQ is an emulation of the Siemens uh, W295B uh, EQ unit from the 1960s it's a solid state unit really well built and just sounds amazing and of course it has a drive control uh, wherever you can throw in a drive control and sound toys you got to have one um, let's see moving down the line here we got the uh, tremulator and this is everything tremolo um, so a lot of this is inspired by uh, the Fender Vibrolux and the Wurlitzer electric piano um, uh, tremolo and uh, and then of course it gives you uh, with a tweak panel all kinds of additional tools that allow you to change the shape of that and uh, and all the different rates and everything else so there's loads of stuff that's in there that you can load up and all of these plugins have uh, you know or many of them especially like this will have presets that you can dig into uh, to get into uh, get into them deeper um, one that is not really an emulation so much um, although it takes a lot of influences from things that were done in the past is a little altar boy and uh, this gets into three basic you know kind of vocal format shifting pitch shifting and robotic style effects so this is getting back into like vocoder kind of territory what's cool about this is there is actually um, and you wouldn't necessarily see it right from the surfaces but there's a MIDI access to it and uh, you can plug in a keyboard and that would allow you to create vocoder effects with it so it's a little bit deeper than just the four knobs and and uh, mode switch would let you think and uh, so there's a lot of stuff lingering in in that hiding in that plugin so um, with this collection it's not 
you know, a huge number of plugins, but every uh, plugin is a gem in this collection. It's really um, an amazing, um, amazingly creative setup of tools uh, that you can use to, you know, process and, you know, create effects and do something that's out of the ordinary, that's interesting, and also uh, has a lot of analog character and, um, and vintage sound to it, which really makes it amazing. So um, Sound Toys, uh, really incredible company, and uh, they've got something very unique in the marketplace, and uh, that is why it's on the manufacturer's spotlight of the ultimate plug-in guide, Mixing with Mike, Sound Toys. <laughs>